Greetings and salutations, YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. Um, so this is something a little bit different. Um, this video is not going to be about swords or knives or you know the tools to make them, but um, it's kind of near and dear to me. There is a uh, a YouTube channel that I watch. It's called Acorn to Arabella. And uh, back when I was kind of getting started, I fell into the YouTube channel, and they they are two gentlemen who are building a wooden boat by hand on their land. So I'm watching their channel, and I'm, I'm binge watching it, and uh, it is so amazing to watch something along those lines, something so big to be created by just two people, and you know, on a budget. I mean, they're cutting all of their own trees, they're drying them, they're milling them. I mean, it's a heck of a lot of work. I contacted them, and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm a metal worker and you guys inspire me. And I want a boat, I've wanted a boat forever. I wanted to go out on the sea. I, I, I love the idea of just kind of living off a boat for a while. Fortunately, I get seasick. <laughs> so, not in the cards for me, but um, so I'm vicariously living through them. And they wanted me to, once I reach out to them, I'm like, hey, I, I can do these things. And they're like, yeah, 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 please, can you make a row setter, is I think what it's called. Um, I think these are rows, so, you know, so kind of do this. Can you see that? Okay. And then we have the washer, and then we have the regular one. So, like any standard rivet, um, what you do is, is you basically, you know, drive this giant copper nail through the boat. And I'm assuming they're drilling pilot holes because this is this is copper, it's really soft. And then once that's through the boat, and it's gonna be from that back end, then they put something heavy, like a hammer, on the back end, and then they put the washer on the front end, and then they put this thing over the top. And that thing over the top is what I'm making. Um, and uh, this, is the beginnings of it. This is a Jeep coil spring, um, and uh, it is going to turn into their rope setter. I have straightened it out. Um, I have flattened out these ends. I plan on cutting it here, upsetting a little bit to make it a little bit fatter, because um, as you can tell, um, it is not going to have a whole lot of meat around it. But that's what this video is. So. Uh, Stay tuned to the end and you'll be able to see how this is made. I'm not going to forge everything, but ultimately what it turns out to be is it's a root setter or a monkey tool or all along those lines. It's basically the same idea. All right, that's the video. Hope you enjoy. Okay. This is what we're starting with. It is a piece of Jeep leaf spring. Just freshly cut. So, not quite a full coil, but it'll be close. Chucking that in the fire. Alright, so speeding this up quite a bit. It takes a really long time to straighten out a leaf spring, because that is some really, really tough steel. Um, as you can tell from this speed up, I really, really, really need to... Uh, Get an anvil stand and keep that from moving. Um, throughout this entire movie, you'll watch it actually walk across the screen. And uh, I'm out there working. And I didn't really notice it. You can see the snow. Here I am trying to create that octagon on the power hammer. This is me upsetting it. Again, as I said, I wanted it to be a little bit fatter so that it goes around the rivets a little bit better. And then of course, upsetting also kinks it so you have to straighten it out. So upsetting, straighten, upsetting, straighten. And I dropped my hammer. And again. No. Yeah, gloves don't really help. 
Uh, they keep you from getting blisters, but it's really hard to hold on the hammer, so I take them off. Really is quite amazing how much that anvil locks watching this and speed up. It's about 300%, so this is about three times fast as normal. And again with the straightening. It's about now that I'm realizing that it may be a little bit too long. And now I'm working on the actual profiling. Square, octagon, round. Although I'm not going to go back to round, I'm just going to stay at octagon. And this is where I decided to cut things off. Um, little note, uh, that steel is still really, really hot. And um, I basically ruined a bandsaw blade doing this. Because taking a really, really hot piece of steel and a quarter band, um, it's really, really easy to overheat those teeth, and you end up rounding it off. So, you see me finishing it up with a hacksaw. And this is another, my pension for old tools. That hacksaw is probably on the ranges of 50, 60 years old. Older than I am. I got it from my grandma, grandfather. And uh, you see that? post vise in the back. Eventually it's going to be right where that vise is and not wobbly. Because that vise is really wobbly. That's me taking the anvil and trying to unwobble the vise. Because that's my striking anvil. Also not finished yet. Back to the port of bed and seeing if it works. And it does. Just for that small little bit. Okay. Here I am putting in my touch mark. Unfortunately, all the footage of me finishing up the octagon was lost. Camera issues. But you'll see it has a nice octagon shape. Fortunately, there's no real way to do this and film it from this direction. So, a little bit of hot rasping. Again, I want to make sure that it's nice and soft in the hands. Because this is going to be used a lot. Alright. Now to drill the hole. Okay, so here it is, as you can see, all the way drilled in. All right, I just put a lathe chuck in my drill bit, stepped it right up, and we are ready to go. As you can tell, not a whole lot of clearance in there. Now for heat treat. Here we go, into the quench. realize this is canola or vegetable oil, so the smoke is not toxic. Part of the reason why I use canola and vegetable oil. Without a taller heat quench tank, it's really hard not to get your face somewhere close to it. At this moment in time, I dropped the whole thing in there because it did want a little bit of hardness on the back end. I didn't want it crazy, crazy hard. Speaking of, because I'm, I'm basically swirling it around in here and it's kind of hard because there's actually the, the quench tank is not the size that you see it there's a small ceramic bowl in there holding a very small amount of oil 
eventually that whole thing's going to be filled up, but I haven't gotten around to uh, visiting my local fast food restaurant to see if I can't get a large amount of used oil. So, it's kind of hard. I'm going to go grab a file real quick because I want to file test it. skating. It's hard. I think it bites in a little on the back, but that's okay. Definitely skates on the front area. So we're going to call that a success. All right, so here they are in all their glory. So this is the rivet setter, all done. And this is the backing. Um, got a little darker than I wanted. I think it was a little too hot when I put the wax on. Both are beeswaxed, so they should resist rusting for a while. This one is just pure mild steel. Um, I didn't actually film it because my iPhone turned off. So wonderful joy. I'm hoping to get a camera here soon, so that doesn't happen. But pretty much all it is is a big chunk of mild still in a rough hammer shape. Um, so you can basically get a nice grip on it. So when they so you put the hole through the uh, wood, and this goes right up on the back, and then you put the rivet on, and then I just drop the rivet. This gets hammered on to set the rivet, and that is as far as it goes. So if the wood is thinner than that, then they're gonna have to cut the rivet first. Hopefully it's not. Um, and then you cut the rivet off wherever that uh, the washer sits, and then boom. So show you it in action. So, basically, rather than the device holding it, there would be a person holding that. And you set that up there, and then you hold on to it. Oops. And it sets the rivet down. You pull this off, and cut the rivet off, and then pin the end. So. Are ready to go. Hopefully, you guys like them and hopefully, they work for you. And uh, for those of you watching my channel, if you haven't watched Acorn to Arabella, I highly encourage you guys to go do so. So, thank you very much.